Well, hi again, everybody. Uh, it was a while since I made my last uh, uh, video. Well, <coughs> the the subject of today's video is the piece of equipment I just purchased, uh, which I do not normally buy or get interested in audio equipment. Uh, but this time I <coughs> I was looking for some kind of uh, a data acquisition solution uh, that I can use with my sound card. And what I found that there are several um, uh, solutions now available, uh, which are uh, um, uh <coughs> are several sound cards, uh, I would say, uh, that are capable of um, sample rates up to 192 kHz and uh, uh, with 24-bit resolution. And those ones are usually more expensive or less expensive. So uh, the sound card that come, came with my computer which is uh, a 16-bit sound card and it has a 96 kHz uh, uh, sample, uh, sample rate. So <coughs> after searching uh, online and, and uh, some forums, uh, I found this uh, uh, device, uh <coughs> which is, uh, this one is uh, made uh, by a company called uh, uh, Steinberg, and uh, I think they were purchased by Yamaha, and uh, of course it's made in China, and it, uh, it costs about $100, $150 or so. Uh, US. I mean, uh, you can find them cheaper, or in Canada, they, these ones are 150 bucks, I guess, or something like that. So this is a, the, the nice thing about this one is this is a U, it has a USB interface, um, and uh, so I can connect it to any of my PCs without worrying about um, um, having to unplug the, the, the card and replace it. So USB <coughs> seems to be the better solution, f at least for me it is. Um, well, what I found that the, those cards are, this is not new, nothing new about this, uh, these devices. Uh, uh, something similar uh, with 24-bit sampling uh, resolution and, and 192 um, kilohertz sampling rate was available six, seven years ago. And uh, uh, that's probably the reason that people uh, buy a separate standalone uh, sound card if they want to have uh, something <coughs> something like that some uh, professional sound at, at higher sampling rates and so on because otherwise you usually have uh, uh, the sound card that's already came with your motherboard usually enough uh, so I looked around and what I found there were um, a devices called uh, U E M U uh, which was manufactured by a company which is later um, which was later uh, purchased by uh, another uh, company that makes uh, uh, sound blaster cards <coughs> but what I found is that since uh, they purchased it uh, there are no drivers available for Windows 7 and so on so um, that's the reason I guess I had to buy uh, um, piece of more high-end equipment that has features that I don't need is because this one <laughs> appears to have uh, better support in terms of drivers and I don't have to worry about uh, where to find driver or um, rebuilding my uh, Linux kernel to enable the support for it or things like that <coughs> uh, which are quite annoying I would say so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to <coughs> I'm going to do uh, some uh, teardown of this device. Uh, particular things that I'm interested to find out is how is it implemented? How did they get uh, 192 kilohertz uh, sampling rate out of this uh, um, uh, USB sound card? And also I would like to find out uh, did they make any compromises? Does it really 192 uh, kilohertz uh, uh, sampling rate uh, ADC used inside this? Uh, or maybe they did something else. That's I, I'm just generally curious about this and uh, how did they get this kind of uh, sampling rate at this price range. Maybe I'm mistaken, maybe uh, it's not such a big deal anymore to have uh, a high sampling rates at, uh, <coughs> at this kind of price, uh, but that's, that's what I was told at the store where I bought this equipment, that generally uh, user, consumer uh, type electronics 
uh, which is non-professional lecture, audio electronics do not provide um, a sampling rates uh, up to 192 kilohertz. Well, I'll see. Um, another thing I'm interested in is, is to find out what kind of filtering is used on the input on uh, at the input of this device, because what I'm interested in is in capturing um, uh, sound and vibration signals in the range of uh, uh, let's say 38 uh, 40 kilohertz that would be very beneficial if I can do that and uh, the sampling rate of 192 <coughs> uh, which is let's say 30 uh, multiplied by um, uh, let's say the Ny Nyquist uh, sampling rate of, of, of four times will be 120 so the 192 uh, should be enough if uh, I can actually get the signal through or perhaps I will have to make some modifications there are some tests to be to be <coughs> uh, to be run with this device and uh, since I don't need it for sound I would I'm really interested to find out uh, what kind of uh, uh, use I can get out of this outside of uh, a sound recording Okay, let's take it apart and uh, let's see what's inside. I hope this time I'll have to do much, uh, lots of um, um, uh, video editing. And you know that I am not um, any kind of um, audio engineer because of uh, the boss complaints I get about my video, <laughs> usually about sound, because the sound here is too loud and this chunk it's too low i try to do some research and i try to <coughs> uh, now i'm using um i'm using a road mic <coughs> with my video camera and uh, this time i'm using uh, also a uh, manual again so this is uh, very easy to open up Ta -da. just four screws on the back well it's that's so that's what uh semi-professional I guess <laughs> equipment is all about is um, it's probably s serviceable <coughs> well here we go I think I found something that explains everything at least uh, uh, the, the characteristics of this uh, here's this this uh, this is a, a serious logic CS4270 which is a 24-bit um, ADC slash DAC device. Um, it's designed specifically for stereo audio. Uh, <coughs> I think this one is also a codec at the same time. And it, it interacts, uh, so the interface for this one is I2S. Um, and this is I2S um, uh, device which interacts with DSP. Well, this is Yamaha CPU. I'm now wondering if this is really Yamaha or just a generic um, microprocessor um, uh, very branded by uh, Yamaha. Well, Yamaha is a big company, so I don't know. Uh, probably it's not. They make their own chips. And uh, But the fact that this one is, uh, this is the Sirius Logic uh, CS2, CS4270. Uh, this is a common device. I was able to find... Um, uh, a data sheet uh, on uh, Serious <coughs> Logic website, so that uh, I, I have a pinout. And uh, this uh, this particular um, audio codec device uh, um, supports a sampling rate up to 216 uh, samples per second, a uh, kilo samples per second. Sorry, so. <coughs> Uh, nothing I found, nothing special about the clock. Well, this is not the clock that... Uh, um, this is the clock that uh, is positioned right next to the to the microprocessor or DSP processor. And I found no separate clock uh, next to uh, the Cirrus logic. So I'm not quite sure where the clock is coming from. Um, for the, the sampling rate for this device, but um, I'm gonna do some probing and find out. In addition to this um, Sirius Logic device, I found quite a few 
uh, operational amplifiers. Uh, these ones are um, made by a company called uh, New Japanese Radio. Uh, New J uh, Japanese Radio Operational Amplifier, or New Japanese Radio Company. It's um, NJM4565 operational amplifiers, and they allow for plus minus 18 uh, volts of voltage swing. But uh, they have a, um, a 10 megahertz uh, uh, gain band this product, uh, but um, what I see here is that the gain falls down quite significantly after about uh, by about 10 dB at uh, 10 kilohertz. So I'm not sure <coughs> if that's uh, going to be the disadvantage uh, for my purposes because I was uh, hoping that I can sample um, um, internal signal uh, incoming signals at frequencies uh, uh, much uh, higher than 20 kilohertz uh, so one idea I'm going to try <clears throat> knowing the the restrictions that uh, this uh, operational amplifiers um, have is uh, I'm going to try to to uh, <clears throat> use uh, generate signal high frequency signal using uh, the function generator that I have and I'm going to uh, set the gain on uh, on this um, um, sound card uh, down to a minimum meaning that I'm not going to use the internal um, operational amplifiers to provide me with any gain but instead I'm going to <coughs> Um, increase the signal level, so input signal level, so that uh, theoretically what I can do is that if I want to have um, a higher throughput and um, I want to look at the uh, 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 sample signals of the higher uh, rate, what I can do is I can have a, a find the operational amplifier uh, that has higher bandwidth than the ones that used on this board. Um, and then by um, reducing gain to down to a minimum, I can then uh, use the amplification uh, from the op amps from the external device and uh, feed the signal uh, as is. Hopefully that the the, the, the internal ADC at uh, the Cirrus Logic uh, um, chip will actually. Um, provide me with uh, the sampling light I'm looking for. Um, another interesting thing is that I see <coughs> there are uh, a pairs of capacitors at the uh, input uh, uh, here and uh, right here. Uh, those are uh, 22, 22 microfarad. So if you can actually file it, point it this way. So these ones are a couple of 22 microfarad capacitors. I think that would uh, amount to 22 microfarad 50 volt uh, capacitors. So that I believe that would be um, a 44 microfarad uh, uh, capacitors at the input um, at each input. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's the what's the impedance that uh, of the input that goes right after the capacitor. So it's hard to uh, guess what uh, would be the, the lower frequency that I can see. Uh, well, it should be around 20, 20, uh, 30 um, hertz. Uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, for some um, experiments that I would like to make with this board, I, I'd rather have this value much lower, so let's say in the range of uh, 4 or 5 uh, hertz, although I don't, I don't think this expectation is reasonable uh, in this case. Um, another interesting thing which about this is the uh, um, uh, sound interface um, is that uh, there is a high uh, impedance mode uh, but it's only available for single channel which is channel 2 um, so I'm probably wanted <coughs> I would like uh, probably will uh, experiment to see 
uh, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of effect and uh, what uh, if I can get um, better uh, capturing of uh, uh, low frequency signals with uh, high Z uh, option enabled or disabled. I'm not uh, I'm not quite sure, but perhaps uh, uh, this uh, might help in this situation. So. <coughs> Um, pin free on uh, on this uh, source logic uh, DAC ADC uh, device is uh, the master clock, and uh, well, I'm actually it's this one is the master clock frequency at. Uh, in free is 24 megahertz so this one is not um, it's not a sampling frequency it's uh, this this clock has been divided internally uh, to obtain 192 or 216 uh, kilohertz uh, inside uh, the uh, the DAC And it's this, this is one is very nice and I'd say clean. Uh, one of the cleanest clocks, uh, clock signals I've ever seen on devices like this. There's one interesting observation. I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but uh, when I was looking at a store <coughs> at a similar um, uh, USB uh, sound cards or uh, a sound uh, interfaces, how they call them, what I found is that uh, there are many more or less um, some are more expensive some are less expensive uh, but uh, less known brand names they actually list uh, explicitly what kind of device uh, this um, uh, this this uh, this board is uh, their design is based on so basically you, you take uh, you pick up the box you look at uh, specifications and a spec one of the specifications that they have on the right on the box it says well, this one is based off, let's say, Sirius Logic um, uh, 4270, and so <laughs> anyone who is <laughs> who is uh, who is looking at what to expect would probably say, "Oh, that's uh, quite interesting information. I know what uh, what uh, this uh, DAC uh, is capable of. I have, I can find out the data sheet and then look at the specs." And I'm not gonna blame the manufacturer for, for you know, for uh, um, exploding the, the or blowing the the, the specs out of uh, out of proportion. However, I see there are other things, not only the the, the, the specifications of the chip. Also, there are other components that <clears throat> could affect uh, the overall performance. But I guess that's the trick everyone is based on. So if you have the if you clearly say what uh, what uh, hardware is this uh, is this board built on uh, what components been used for many that's the all information they need it's quite nice and i think uh, i haven't noticed that kind of trend before so i have connected this um, <coughs> my sound card to uh, a function generator where i can generate uh, um, audio signal, audio level signal, uh, up to 30 megahertz. What I'm going to do is, well, I'm go only going to test it from, uh, let's say, uh, zero, uh, one hertz, uh, up to uh, 30 or 48 kilohertz. Uh, 48 kilohertz will be uh, about four times uh, less than uh, 192. So. <coughs> taking into consideration that I would like to keep my sampling rate uh, about four times of the, uh, of, uh, the signal frequency, um, uh, I, would, I would choose the maximum I'm interested in that I would say is uh, 48 kilohertz. So 
I have this uh, uh, software running in uh, capturing um, uh, the incoming signal at uh, using Windows drivers uh, provided uh, and this one is um, uh, using 192 uh, kilohertz uh, sampling rate at 24 bits and this is a stereo signal as I said and this is uh, a Fourier transform um, <coughs> of a fast uh, Fourier transform uh, uh, frequency uh, diagram uh, plot this is the Fourier transform plot at uh, the window size is um, uh, four uh, kilo points so basically what we are we looking at is a uh, um, CV signal so it's not as important uh, of uh, the sampling rate so this one is pretty quick um, and this is the Hanning window what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly change. Um, there is there is there is one interesting thing about this software is that I can add a marker um, at specific frequency. <laughs> However, I cannot add the marker at. Uh, at don't know how to make it follow the the uh, the the peaks. Well, this this seems to be what uh, I was looking for but it doesn't do anything so perhaps it's not a uh, working feature or it's not implemented so I have a, a um, one marker at 48 kilohertz and another one it's at let's say five uh, and let's say at uh, one kilohertz and let me say at 20 and I'm setting this uh, markers uh, for the reason I will explain a little bit later. So here we go. Those markers show up, and you can see. So um, right now it's uh, minus 51 dB on uh, a left channel. So my uh, I have a two-channel function generator. However. I'm only generating a signal on the, uh, on the one channel and everything you see on this channel below uh, which is the right channel is a crosstalk so somehow I get a signal from the left channel um, uh, to propagate into the right channel <coughs> well I'm using quite a funny setup because uh, a few connectors and then uh, could be my cabling and anything else so but if I disconnect uh, the the input from the sound card completely as you can see it goes away but you can see still even if I have it uh, disconnected um, well let me actually raise the frequency so that to Yes, to uh, five kilohertz, um, and you can still see um, this is not this this uh, this diagram is not being calibrated. So that means that I have uh, minus eighty five uh, uh, dB here, but it doesn't uh, mean anything unless we know the uh, the. <coughs> it's it's only meaningful in comparison to the to the uh, signal on the left channel so if we see I now plugged in which is minus 51 dB uh, which is corresponding to 100 millivolt peak to peak that I have set on my uh, function generator and at the same time uh, I, I didn't set the impedance correctly either so now if I disconnect so you can see the difference is 84 minus 51 that's it's 34 dB so the, the insulation between channels is only 34 dB that's including my cable so now if I disconnect I'm plugging uh, I'm unplugging it from the input for into the sound card okay so it's 110 you cannot see this signal at all now 
Well, let's go up in frequency and see what will, s will happen. Well, as you can see, as, <laughs> as we go up in frequency, um, now I have, uh, this is uh, a 20 kilohertz. You can see that the, e uh, the crosstalk is getting worse. And again, I'm saying that I have the, 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 the input uh, disconnected. So that means this is the crosstalk that we have inside uh, the, the sound card itself. And um, so let's remember what uh, minus 52 and at minus at minus uh, that was minus 51 so we lost about 1 dB relative when we went from 5 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz and as we I increase the frequency so this is the limit which is the 48 kilohertz it's minus 54 so I lost about 3 dB in my signal um, uh, from uh, um, 1 kilohertz down uh, up to 40, 48 kilohertz but uh, what you notice is that the crosstalk inside the card itself also went up and uh, it was almost zero I wouldn't see uh, I was not able to see anything and now it's uh, minus 100 so it went by about 8 8 9 dB well, so here I made um, a few changes <coughs> first of all I've um, I have uh, done exactly the same thing but this time I am using um, a frequency range uh, I'm looking at frequency range from uh, one from basically from DC uh, to 200 Hertz and see how <coughs> what kind of results we're gonna get this time so I am um, now going to st uh, set my uh, uh, function generator to a hundred Hertz frequency and uh, this is the same um, um, 100 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal and uh, let me out the scale and you can see here here we have a um, almost the same result as we had with one kilohertz which is it shows the minus 50 dB a uh, signal level again this is very relative um, <coughs> and it doesn't show any crosstalk uh, inside the device and if I plug in uh, well my own setup my cables and everything else doesn't show any crosstalk either so this is a uh, very coarse so I can actually try to uh, get better results by um, increasing number of samples that we were going to be looking at for uh, fast for free air transfer <coughs> well this is this looks better so now I'm going to slowly um, decrease the frequency so it's 90 Okay, sorry, that was not frequency, that was uh, <laughs> that was my um, amplitude. So I go to 90, C stays the same, 80, 70. go down to 20 so at 20 Hertz uh, we started seeing some of the of the drop um, in amplitude and uh, we also see some harmonics showing up 
Oh, well, okay. Let's say 20, and then maybe we want to see the harmonics. Well, 40. Uh, let's say we want to see 10 as well, but that's not... Okay. So this is 20, and 10 isn't showing up here. That's not a harmonic, this is 60. Uh, 60 hertz is showing through. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I know it's supposed to be, but there's a notch filter installed somewhere <laughs> that have that, uh, taken care of it uh, pretty well. Uh, at least I didn't see it pre before I tried this experiment. And um, okay, so I want to see the marker. So it's minus fi fifty four. So we lost about four dB when we went to uh, at twenty hertz at um, sixteen. It's minus fifty four. So we okay. So I rescaled it. So that one means at uh, 16 kilohertz, it's minus 5 dB. And at 10, it doesn't want to go down. And at 10, it's 60 uh, dB. So I guess this is when we get minus 10 dB. Attenuation is uh, at 10 hertz, uh, which is expected <coughs> uh, since this this is not this is outside of range of uh, 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 normal audio signal. However, I would hope that um, the the signals um, f uh, can you know the signal at the five five hertz can uh, g really go through. And the reason why I'm looking at this uh, uh, the the low frequency such as five hertz is that I w wanted to, to use this uh, this. Uh, mm, uh, audio interface also for uh, some uh, um, s seismic experiments that I had uh, with geophones and stuff like that but um, it's not going to work very well without uh, uh, modifications perhaps I can change the capacitors at the input so that the, the, fre the lower frequencies can go uh, through as well well, another interesting gotcha, <laughs> uh, what I found out is that I switched uh, from uh, channel 1 to channel 2. On channel 2, it appears that um, uh, there is no crosstalk from uh, 1 to 2, uh, although, uh, from, sorry, from 2 to 1, although there is a, a significant crosstalk from 1 to 2. Um, at higher frequencies, uh, frequencies above uh, 48 kilohertz or so. Um, I'm actually trying to... Uh, yeah, so you can see that I changed my frequency to 52 now and I don't see any crosstalk either. So that's... Uh, uh <coughs> this is only... Um, appears to be a problem from uh, 1 uh, to 2. Um, so what I'm trying, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, uh, try to use uh, a preamplifier, uh, which is uh, built into sound card. And as I, as I, my theory is that since this sound card, uh, sound uh, interface, audio interface board has uh, operational amplifiers. And that's are most likely used for uh, to amplify uh, as a basis for a preamplifier, and it has a uh, um, uh, bandwidth limitations. 
So that, uh, that's what I'm going to, to check if that's true or not. So um, I'm going to um, well this is this is the, the uh, my preamp now on the channel 2 is that it's maximum you can see uh, the crosstalk starts to appear and uh, Uh, there are some harmonics also showing up here. So if I go back, oh. so so the the noise floors is going up. Okay, so you can see that <coughs> the noise floor is going up also by about 20 dB. We can see some side effects showing up once I started using. Um, this is this is the maximum. Uh, uh, the 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 preamplifier is set at maximum. Uh, obviously, interesting trick. So now I'm going to try to use. Um, a high Z input uh, button and see what uh, kind of effect that will give me. Oops. Oh, there we go. Um, what I see right now is okay. So this is the, the this is when um, the peak detector uh, light up is okay. So if I go down. Oops, so th at this point there are no the peak detector is off uh, meaning that this is the maximum uh, uh, amplification in, uh, in in the preamp um, you see lots of uh, interesting uh, products right there so if I so the high Z input is gen uh, definitely results in, in more junk showing up on the frequency range. <coughs> and uh, this is me at, uh, this is the medium attenuation, 50% uh, amplification. Without uh, um, high Z, high impedance options, uh, we I don't have the peak detection going off. So, so even a smaller um, amplification using the built-in preamp uh, results in significant noise inc noise increase. And. Um, well, people were uh, <coughs> were right uh, noticing that um, in order to use this this uh, uh, get best out of this uh, I audio interface, uh, the preamp sh 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 you should avoid using the the preamp, uh, which clearly indicates that it's true. Um, here is the data sheet that I found uh, for. <coughs> Uh, the Cirrus Logic uh, stereo uh, audio codec. So this uh, <coughs> uh, this single chip contains uh, both uh, ADC DAC and audio codec, and uh, the, it it it's interfaces to the microprocessor over I square S uh, interface, which is uh, analog of I square C. Uh, but only used for audio, so uh, <coughs> I guess everybody knows that, I shouldn't say, but still, <coughs> probably worth mentioning. Um, there, there are no, I found nowhere uh, in the manuals or a specification uh, for the, the Steinberg UR22, I found 
um, any kind of uh, noise or um, dynamic range or um, uh, distortion data. Uh, so I I was quite surprised that I wasn't able to find any. However, it's, you can see that uh, here from here uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, this this stereo audio codec um, chip uh, probably defines entirely uh, what um, what kind of characteristics uh, this. Uh, uh, entire audio interface uh, device is um, uh, capable of. <coughs> so this board can operate in, in three different modes and uh, as we looked at, uh, at, uh, at the diagrams for uh, um, uh, ripple noise and, and uh, other characteristics, um, the board actually should uh, switch uh, from a uh, single mode, single speed to double speed and quad speed. And here are the, are the, 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 the frequencies at the, or the sampling rates at which uh, <coughs> the switch should occur. Uh, it's not really clear to me whether we always have uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, the, the audio interface will make uh, the, the transition from uh, the lower uh, speed mode um, with <coughs> choosing different um, uh, sample speed. But however, uh, this uh, uh, audio interface does come with uh, Um, special uh, configuration utility that uh, can allows you to control uh, uh, the buffer size as well as uh, the sampling rates. And you can see uh, that here you have 48, 96 and 192. I believe so with switching between them <coughs> A corresponding uh, shift uh, from one sampling mode to another uh, uh, will be executed. So, so if uh, the signal of interest, so if you're trying to look at the the signal at uh, lower frequency <coughs> uh, range. Uh, probably it makes sense to uh, switch between the, the modes, the sampling modes, and, and uh, here there are corresponding characteristics for the for the DAC and ADC uh, that um, we can get uh, in those modes. I started making this video. I uh, <coughs> it was uh, sunny outside, so I had to change the lighting here. Uh, probably will be very noticeable in the video. So what's the conclusion on this? Uh, what I was looking for, I was actually looking for um, <clears throat> uh, something I can use as a sort of a poor man uh, dynamic signal analyzer where I can get myself uh, a data acquisition board, uh, uh, one or two channels. Um, obviously stereo comes in two channels, but there is a, there is a, there is a problem with that as you can see that <clears throat> uh, using both channels will actually, uh, my result in uh, 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 problems because uh, there is a, c a, a crosstalk inside uh, this um, audio interface, and you can see that crosstalk is is visible on any frequencies above, let's say, uh, 40 kilohertz. And I wasn't actually expecting this to work very well as uh, as uh, as far as uh, above uh, 48 kilohertz, but you can see that it is capable of capturing um, uh, well from uh, 10 uh, signals in the frequencies in frequency range from well from uh, say 10 Hertz to um, uh, 48 um, uh, kilohertz uh, which is the four times uh, the sampling rate is, is is four times of the input signal uh, which is should be enough according to the to the Nyquist criteria um, what uh, <coughs> Also, is important to note that um, the 
no by not using I, I can eliminate a lot of uh, distortion by not using the internal uh, microphone preamp that built into this unit and that uh, solves many problems I believe the there is a purpose for this uh, preamp which is uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, meant to be linear because in audio circuits they use um, uh, things called compression that's why certain sounds uh, although they, they have same power sound louder to to the human ear and things like that uh, besides this if, if the preamp is not used a uh, performance of this uh, of this uh, uh, audio interface uh, depends entirely on the performance of the ADC uh, which is the um, as I mentioned a Sirius Logic CS 4270 um, uh, uh, stereo ADC which is a 24 bit 192 actually it goes up to 216 uh, kilohertz sampling rate um, and this is a Delta uh, Delta uh, Sigma ADC and I am I wasn't able to to measure exactly the performance of this ADC uh, using my current setup and uh, uh, other things I would like to actually get uh, good numbers for or uh, the, the, the the noise ratio and which is <coughs> uh, well you can you can kind of see that uh, on the FFT diagram what the noise is uh, but um, uh, the total harmonic distortion well in order to measure that I need to figure out a, a good setup uh, what I can the only thing I can compare it to is is uh, uh, my function generator but I can read can trust what my function generator um, uh, total harmonic distortion is and then try to use that signal as a um, uh, or signal one channel as uh, etalon and, and do something along those lines in order to get a good number well in order to measure it properly I believe I need a better uh, dynamic signal analyzer as one from Agile and that can that has a um, less noise uh, uh, smaller noise figure and uh, smaller uh, harmonic distortion uh, than this uh, audio interface uh, but uh, what I can see that uh, I can say that uh, there are probably many many other uh, audio interfaces uh, um, in a similar price range uh, like this one and uh, many of those uh, probably use uh, Sirius Logic uh, ADCs so if you shop around you can find some interesting uh, uh, consumer hardware and you can get some uh, <coughs> Uh, so you can get uh, yourself a, a setup uh, which is much cheaper than uh, a dynamic signal analyzers that are out there on the market well it all depends on what kind of performance you're looking for um, well I have to <coughs> thank everyone for watching and uh, if I will uh, um, have any updates on, on the on, the, on this uh, um, experiment so I, I will make uh, an additional videos so thank you very much for watching again bye